Hey, welcome to today's focus lesson. I'm going to talk about shifting, which um, makes cello playing rich if you have a big variety in shifting. Um, and you might know that a lot of the color in shifting comes from what you do in relation between the, sh the actual shift with your left hand and the bow. So there are generally three ways of doing it. And I'll demonstrate it with a shift on the second finger so we don't worry about different fingers for the start. You can do the shift at the same time as you do the bow change, which is the hardest way in a, in a, in a way. So that you don't hear the shift. And then you can do the shift in an anticipated way, meaning you shift before the bow change. which is kind of the most prominent way of doing it, even if in music you hide it a bit more than I did now, but it's a very prominent way of shifting. And then you can do it after the bow change, which is a late shift. And that gives a little accent and emphasis on the arriving note. So that's when you do it on, on one finger, you can now try that with, with the bow change so that you can't hear the shift. You do it on the old bow as an, um, as an anticipated shift and you do it on the, on, after the bow change. So that's the, the basic way of doing it and obviously if you use different fingers then this changes a bit and you can't do all of them in the same intensity and the same um, richness. Let's go from the first finger to the fourth finger. Now again there are two ways of doing that. You can do the shift on the finger that you start from. That means you go, if I go to the G, you go from the, the B to the E on the first finger and then you put the finger down. one way of shifting and then you can do it on the arriving finger which from one to four is quite difficult again that means you have to that's the slow motion picture you put all your fingers down while you shift and that creates the, the image of a glissando and you can't really hear when the fourth finger takes over so that's quite tricky and depending on which finger you use it gets easier obviously going from one to two is easier than going from one to four but what you need to try is do the glissando and the takeover of the finger simultaneously so that in the end you don't hear that it's actually a change of finger it should sound like like that so that's one thing of doing that and once you've figured those two ways out with your left hand, then you start combining these things with the bow. So again, go back to doing the two different thing, uh, uh, things with your left hand. And then the other one. Do that quicker. And then you start combining that with the bow. Now if we do that one that I did last, to go to the fourth finger, do that on the old bow. Do it simultaneously. So that it's inaudible. And then you do it on the new bow. Yeah. And then you do the same thing with the finger that you leave from. That means you do the bow change in the moment when you hit the string with the arriving finger. You do it simultaneously. And the third version of this doesn't exist because if you do that it becomes really tasteless because you get a note that you don't want to hear. I'll demonstrate it but you don't want it. 
because you get the this. So that combination doesn't exist. If you want to practice this, go back first to doing it on one finger and then you bring a combination of fingers in to make it um, more difficult and have a gradual practice process. Don't forget to click subscribe. See you at the next focus lesson.